Um, good afternoon. I think we could start. Uh, I'm very, very glad and honored of introduce our guests uh, to the talk uh, uh, Studying, Working, Teaching about Women and Architecture. Uh, we are here with uh, two deans and the vice dean of international affairs of three European schools. And so, uh, in order, uh, Oya Atalay Frank. Uh, Oya is president of uh, European Association for Architectural Education and dean of the school uh, ZHAW, the School of Architecture of Winterthur in, in Switzerland, to be more clear. Uh, then, uh, Mia Roth Cerina. Uh, she is in the board of the Europe European Association and she is vice dean of, uh, um, the University of the School of Architecture of the University of Zagreb. And, uh, and then Sally Stewart, uh, also in the board of EAE and uh, dean of the Macintosh School of Architecture in Glasgow an old uh, uh, institution as, as the School of Zagreb. Um, so we are here for talking about uh, uh, a topic, a topic that uh, we consider really uh, important and interesting for us, and uh, is about uh, uh, the presence of uh, young uh, female students in our School of Architecture and uh, how is the life uh, in our schools and uh, uh, what happens after, after the school. This is the real uh, problem for us and the real difference um, uh, that we have uh, related to the opportunities that we have in our, uh, in our work life after, after the graduation. Uh, so, uh, uh, I ask to Oya of introducing the topic and then uh, Mia and Sally uh, and they have a presentation related to the European condition and uh, to the situation of their schools and countries. So we will try to, uh, to define the differences and, and then we will have a discussion uh, in which we would like to involve also the public if you have questions or remarks or, or something. So, thank you. Thank you to all. Thanks a lot, Ilaria. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Small group, but it's nice. Uh, we should be discussing afterwards. I'll come straight into the topic. Um, the practicing or teaching or uh, academical architect and, and especially the females. Now, just briefly, my school is a school of practitioners, so that means all of the students who finish, they don't hit for the academic way, professional way. Uh, they want to build. So what does it mean to me in my context? I'll go one step further, if I can, change my slide. The next one, please. Um, doesn't work. So I have two functions at the moment. As, as the dean of a technical school for professional, for practicing, and then also as the president of uh, the EAA, as uh, Ilaria said. Now, uh, with the next slide, we should be able to see. The question is, where are the women architects? Now, since 140 years at least, uh, women started to gain foothold in the profession. It goes all actually much further than that, but let's say uh, the academia, the professional field, uh, where the subject matter has been discussed and 
is also in pub public, uh, publicly discussed is about so much. It's not a long history. Um, and despite increasing enrollments in architecture schools, especially since 1980s, one would think that 60s with the revolution, it should be better. The numbers in practice have flatlined. That's, these are very general, actually, uh, statements. And the higher one moves up the career lead ladder, the further they decline. Uh, that's also nothing new, and it's not only for the architects. So what are the reasons for that? The reasons are manifold, and it has a long history. Uh, what is to be mentioned is also, again, general, but it's very, very important. It's the mindset shape by, shaped by the idols of our time. It's not only what in the past times happened, it's also now. Uh, it's still the inequality of sexes, uh, and there's a very strong masculine um, idea of the architect's autonomy. And uh, deep and lasting impacts of the educational policies, schools, admissions, professional associations. These are just a few things to name why in the studying, working and teaching women have a different status than men or others. Now, we have to look at the situation with the, under the premises of uh, mul multiple uh, perspectives. There are lots of stereotypes and judgments that we know uh, about the gender, about the style, the uh, professional works, or the teacher, how she works, how she uh, teaches. Uh, there is the societal dimension of the domestic role is still very strong, and uh, the culture with its traditions that we have to also remember. Now, this picture you know quite well. It's from the uh, famous uh, novel and also from the movie F Fountainhead. Uh, this seems to be the brilliant architect, no? Uh, and uh, Rourke is the masculine uh, and revolutionary man who is able to set his ideas into motion and even destroy his own work, his ultimate great work, for the sake of the architecture, good architecture. Then we have, of course, the big father figures of the charismatic leaders like Mies van der Rohe. Who could discuss, who could say something about the importance of Mies? Mies is a name, he is a label. He is our part of our history. Um, it's all right, it's all right. But then we also have some women. And these women partially don't have a name, but they work. This is a woman builder. I don't have her name, but she was working in Berlin uh, on, at the beginning of the century. Then again, we have somebody like Denise Scott Brown. Uh, she is an architect, but uh, as you can see from the pictures as well, the way uh, these uh, figures are insinuated are completely different. And I'm afraid we are still uh, very much kept in these uh, uh, stereotypical images and also identities. Now, I'll take a look at the role of the academia more than the professional perspective. I think it's very important that we question how we maintain and how we reproduce structures of power and privilege. That means we have to be able to break free of gender stereotypes. We have to be more experimental, explorative, open in the curriculum. We have to organize, we have to network, we have to have a collective stance. And that's not only excluding uh, other gender, it has to happen together, but we have to be very much aware and we have to be um, encouraging and active. Now, I want to give you a couple of uh, figures from Switzerland. Uh, ETH Zurich being such a big and important uh, global player. If you look at the student numbers, 2008 to 2018, um, the numbers headcount is amazing, it grew a lot, but the percentage of female students is still from 30 to 33. That's the step it made. So it's quite constant. If you go back, it doesn't make a big lap. Then we have uh, a school like mine, which is University of Applied Sciences, very technically oriented. This is now general numbers, not in architecture. Uh, we have a very constant uh, figure of 48%. I was myself quite surprised about that. The moment I went into the academical fields of architecture or engineering, and just to compare it with management and law students, things get worse. Things look very different. It's like 
again, within a field of 10 years, uh, we have even decrease in the number of students, female students. Um, in engineering, it's almost uh, ridiculous of having not even reaching the 10 percentage uh, of female students among the male. Then you have uh, different uh, disciplines like management and law or uh, health sciences where you have sometimes even more female students than men. So we have some disciplinary questions here as well. You see the numbers uh, of the students and, and also the stuff, it stays pretty much constant. And I ask myself now, uh, having reached a nice position, what do I do? What, how do I react? How do I act in this situation? What I personally try to do is to encourage. If I can employ people, I employ them. And if I can't employ, I recommend further. So this is my motto and this is how I try to work as a dean. If I am in the position as the president of the association to do something, I lobby. I try to look for collaborations and I try to communicate as much as possible. So it's always what you do, how you do, and with whom you do things is very important. Now, I think, again, initiating and acting architecture and policies are very important, especially for those of us who can maybe uh, initiate things, no? And uh, in that sense, the advocacy, development in, of the environment and the culture, these are like our four uh, uh, vectors that we have to keep an eye on. Look at my school, this is 1919, 1925. Uh, it's really working, working hard. This is how it is now. That means it's an open structure. Uh, all students working together. It's not about male, female anymore. We have more instructors as women than the uh, male students. It, it's a great environment. And what I can say uh, from, again, my school's point of view is to be inclusive, to be open, to discuss things as much as possible. Uh, bring things together and discuss further. I think that will help us all. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, so um, this isn't just the beginning of the presentation. Just go back, please. Yes, thank you very much. So I will say something about the specific situation of female architects in Croatia and uh, try to explain this title of optimism in moderation because in some statistics Croatia does present certain anomalies compared to other European statistics but then as we reach the pyramid with Mies on top uh, we also don't have women there so um, So our school is celebrating its centennial uh, this year and um, it had a fairly strong female presence since its foundation. Um, so out of the nine students that enrolled the program in 1919, there, were, uh, there was already one female student and uh, these numbers continuously increased over the years. Um, and these statistics of enrollment on the right are pretty much a constant uh, for almost 40 years now. So there's always, of course, variations in generations, but we do have more than half uh, female students. If we look at the graduation statistics over the 20th century and up until now, you can see in the lower row that the 1978 statistic and the 2018 statistic are pretty much similar. The 1998 statistic maybe speaks something about the fact that the generations graduating in 1998 enrolled during the war, so um, it disrupted some of the male students' uh, study course. And if we look at the um, practicing architects uh, in Croatia, the licensed architects, uh, this uh, percentage uh, in favor of female architects persists, so over the, the years since uh, 2010 up to 2018, you can see that we are holding uh, over 50% uh, quite continuously. 
uh, compared to uh, general European statistics, uh, this, of course, is among the highest. Uh, in general European statistics, there's a significant pay gap, a gender gap in pay, uh, in earnings. Though Croatia is the one on top, one of the two European countries where female architects actually earn more than male architects uh, and have more uh, leading position, especially in uh, small-sized practices. However, when we work our way up uh, the hierarchical pyramid, both in academia and in practice or fame, uh, we can see the um, percentages radically shifting the other way. So this is the current state of our school uh, here and uh, the black dots representing the male uh, professors. And you can see how the number of female professors uh, rises um, down the hierarchy, so if we count the assistants, uh, you, they will be again uh, prevalently female. But the working up the hierarchy then favors men. It becomes even more radically obvious in our choice of deans in the last hundred years, because so far we have only had two female deans in 1979 and 1997. And also, if you just Google Cro architects in Croatia, uh, male figures will pop up, which is quite unusual, actually, because I have to explain something about the background of the high percentage of female students that we had over the years. Uh, after World War II, uh, in the socialist, secular country of Yugoslavia, uh, there was a equality, a gender equality that was greatly promoted um, among the sexes and women were taught they could do all the jobs that men could do and so forth. There was free child care guaranteed uh, up until school for all women who decided to work and so forth. And there were really a, a significant number of female architects which were contributing to the built environment which was rapidly growing in the fast industrialization uh, following World War II. Uh, however, when we talk about the stars of this period, even up to now, uh, you will find very few of these names um, among the superstars. So this has been recently rectified through, um, or trying to be rectified through a number of uh, books, exhibitions, publications, uh, and so forth, celebrating the women who really significantly contributed to the built environment uh, of post-war Croatia. One of them is uh, the before-mentioned Red Dot from 1979, our first demon, a uh, highly charismatic uh, figure, a researcher, and um, architect. Or two female architects who built up most of the significant uh, buildings or a significant number of post-war buildings built in the city of Rijeka uh, who were virtually unknown uh, up until recently to a broader uh, architectural community. And if we look at the situation today in the last 10 years, uh, you can see that if we look at just the highest annual awards uh, awarded by the Croatian Architects Association, you will see women appearing uh, in much smaller percentages than male architects and always as parts of groups uh, or pairs and so forth. And maybe the topic of uh, architecture in pairs is something also to be discussed in this, uh, uh, in this matter. Uh, however, uh, there is a certain tradition that we can draw upon and try to affirm uh, at least by um, recognizing the work of the women who were given an opportunity to build and design uh, in the 20th century and try to bring this recognition uh, till today and for the future. So, thank you.
Hello. Um, I've uh, named my slides, this is what an architect looks like. And that's, that's partly because I think a lot of what we're talking about is about stereotypes and assumptions about what architecture should be about and who should be involved in architecture at any one level. It happens to be today we are talking about architecture in a school of architecture, but we could equally be talking about architecture and women in architecture in a professional context to qualified architects. And the image of the young woman here, her name is Alison Blamire. She was the only woman to teach me architecture when I was a student in Glasgow in the 1980s. So during my five years of architecture, she was the only woman that I encountered in the design studio. Thankfully, that's not quite the situation now, but I think it, it highlights and illustrates some of the issues that play out across time when we are thinking about both architectural education and the makeup of the community of architects that we are part of in Europe. This is a, a photograph of my graduating year. It's very small, 35 people within it, of which 15 women, 20 men. I was surprised when I counted about the balance of women against men. I'm almost, not quite 50%, but, but much closer than I remembered, much closer than I imagined. But what is really interesting to me is the size of that cohort. If I count the graduating year in the same school, Macintosh School of Architecture, that cohort is now 90 students. 90 students entering the profession every year as opposed to 35. So that's one of the changes, not just the makeup of architects, but the number of architects. And that's a particular challenge to us in the UK. So here's comparing the statistics for final year students. So I've only got a few statistics, but I'm trying to actually work out what's going on when I'm looking at these. So you can see there comparison 35 students in 1985, and last year in 2018, 88. We've almost trebled the number of architects, and our architecture students that are trying to qualify after they leave architecture school. If you look at the male students versus female students, then strangely, the balance seems better in the 1980s than last year. And I think that's a, another complexity within these figures. What I'm showing here is final year students. If I make a comparison between the number of students entering first year architecture in my school, um, then you can see for the last two years that in actual fact, female to male students, there are more female students than male students. So there is something happening in terms of the number of female students that continue through their architectural education. And that is not just a situation in my school, but it's a situation across the United Kingdom. Um, every year, uh, our governing body, the RIBA, the Royal Institute of British Architects, asks all 45 students, that, 45 schools that are affiliated to it to give the same statistical information back about the makeup of students, the number of people entering courses, etc. And they produce a database of information which they publish. And you can find that on their website. Um, it's, very, it's very interesting. It doesn't mention any school, but it shows a picture of architectural education in the UK. And so the graph that I'm showing you here today is about students in their second degree, in the second cycle. So these are students doing their master's two years. And there is a slight difference between female students and male students overall, but not significant, 45 to 55%. So there is still not quite equality. It fluctuates year to year. But the RIB also follows students when they leave and enter the profession. And one thing that is notable is that there are fewer women students continuing after their education to qualify as architects. 
So why is that important? Well, it's important that if people have spent at least five years of their formative lives um, through two degrees and, and probably also a significant about, amount of work experience, if they're then, not then going to qualify within the United Kingdom and enter the profession, then that's a loss. There's something causing an obstacle there, but it also means that the profession itself doesn't have the balance, doesn't have the range of people that should be represented in that, and that is an issue. Because one of the things we do not want to do is to replace one stereotype of what an architect should be with other stereotypes. When I was a student, as I've explained, there was only one person who was the role model for me as a student of architecture, the one teacher, the one female architect I saw on a regular basis, and that was Alison. And at the time, particularly, she taught me both in first year and she also taught me in my fourth year. And we were acute, acutely aware that she was the only woman that taught us, but we were also acutely aware that when people gave an example of what a female architect would be like, it was Alison. And to be honest, my friends and I didn't want to be Alison, we wanted to be ourselves. So one of the issues for us was where did we find people who would act as mentors or role models? And at the time, there was very few that we could see in the profession. So for me, if I was to explain the people who were influential during my education, or influential to me when I was thinking about how to become the architect I wanted to be, it generally wasn't architects, female architects, that I could find or see. The first one perhaps was the painting on the left-hand side. And that was my aunt, who was a painter and had, was the first person in our family to go through an art school. So first person to engage with that creative education. Uh, the second two people, Margaret Thatcher and Catherine Hamnett, were very, very visible when I was a student of architecture in my second year. They were two women that had very, very opposing views about life, politics, creativity but they were there making themselves heard, and that was very important. Um, how do you make yourself heard in some of this? And the last two women that I would show are, have been more influential in forming me as a dean, as a head of school, making me think about what head of school of architecture as a woman art should be like. On the left-hand side is uh, Dame Shona Reid, who was our de director, the first director of our art school in 150 years of history. Um, a really amazing woman who um, really pulled the institution into the 21st century. Phenomenal. Very hard to work with, but phenomenal power and engine within our school. And the lady on the other side um, is Jane Allen, who is a critical theorist and helped me to find my voice as an architectural educator in amongst that school. So, for me to find mentors, I had to look across a range of places, not just in architecture. So I think that's also an issue for us as women in architecture. How do not only we find mentors or role models, but how do we provide role models for women entering the architectural education now? Thank you very much.